Hi guys, it's Allie. Welcome to another Time Travel Tuesday where we combine tingles with nostalgia as decided by usually you, but this time as decided by me. If you guys remember, last week I didn't hold a vote for this week's Time Travel Tuesday topic. I told you that I had come into possession of a cool item that fit really well into the theme of Time Travel Tuesday, so I was going to pick the topic, and I have. So I'm going to share with you what that item is. Many of you guessed correctly that today's topic would be Indiana Jones. And that's what I'll be talking about today, because I was recently given this set of Indiana Jones Micro Machines from 1995. Um, and I thought, well, this is perfect. Because I've been wanting to do Indiana Jones for a long time, but it's never quite made it to number one in the votes for Time Travel Tuesday. So here it is. And so I'm going to share these with you and uh, tell you everything that I know about the way he kind of blends in with my bedspread, but this is my cat. Say hi. You see him? Yeah. This is my cat. His name's Albus. He's my baby. So he's gonna join us today, apparently. Um, so before I get started telling you all about Indiana Jones, I want to tell you a little bit about Micro Machines, because this is a really interesting of nostalgic thing in itself. <laughs> so, Micro Machines are a line of toys made by the company, you can see that, Galoob, Galoob, um, which is now actually a part of Hasbro. And they were popular especially in the mid-1980s and and, uh, throughout the 90s. And they are uh, what are known as tiny scale playsets and vehicles. Well, oftentimes they're vehicles, as you can see. And they're especially famous for their commercials, which some of you may remember. Um, their television commercials featured a man, an actor named I think his name, I might pronounce it wrong. His name was John Moshida Jr., who was at that time known in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's fastest talker. And the commercials usually featured the uh, slogan at the end if it doesn't say micro machines, it's not the real thing. popular line that they put out uh, called the Insider Series, and that was, um, if you can imagine, maybe one of these, one of these cars, this is a little dusty because it's old, uh, one of these cars opening on a hinge, and inside of one of these teeny tiny little cars would be another even tinier of a different model. So those were really, really popular um, through like the 80s and early 90s. Um, that's probably one of their most popular series. And I never played with Micro Machines, but when I learned about the Insiders series, I thought, well, as you know, I'm a fan of teeny tiny little miniatures. I love miniatures. So I think that would have been really cool to have this, this tiny little thing open up even tinier thing inside of it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, and they were featured in the well-known film Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin. Uh, 
the main character, Macaulay Culkin's character, Kevin McAllister, fights off. He uses the micro machines to fight off uh, the burglars that are trying to uh, rob his home. And he has tons of micro machines, and he puts them at the bottom of the stairs. They're very, very popular there for a while. So I have some Indiana Jones micro machines that I'm going to show you guys and play with while I tell you all about. your vote in the comments below for your favorite piece of nostalgia. It can be anything. It is not a themed vote. It can be anything from any genre, any decade. Just remember to cast your vote in the comments below. Alright guys, I have gone ahead and uh, begun unboxing the micro machines because uh, I learned that taking all of this out of the uh, cardboard packaging was not <laughs> a pleasant sound experience, so I wanted to spare you that. Uh, I will, however, be uh, un securing them from their little uh, spaces here in the plastic. Uh, they've got their secured down by twisty ties, so I'm gonna start taking them out one by one. So I'm gonna flip this over. Uh, but this one right here, I actually already untwisted, so I'm gonna remove him. And I'll try and remember to tell you which is because um, I have a little cheat sheet on the back of the box. It tells me uh, which vehicle is which and from what film. So this one is try and get it up close. Uh, this one is the Pan Am Raiders of the Lost Ark, which is the first film. And I like this one because these little propellers here on the front actually turn, which is super cute. <laughs> okay, so here's this one. I'm gonna un These are all uh, taped down and twisty tied, so I'll start unpackaging them. Okay. Indiana Jones is a uh, franchise, an entertainment franchise that's 
based on the adventures of a well, fictional, obviously, a fictional archaeologist named Dr. Henry Indiana Jones. There are, well, technically there are four Indiana Jones films. I guess it's up to you whether or not you count the fourth film. In my opinion. Raiders of the Lost Ark, which came out in 1981, and then Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, which came out in 1984. TV series that aired from 1992 to 1996 called uh, The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, uh, which was based on Indiana Jones' childhood and adolescence. George Lucas, uh, who uh, wrote Indiana Jones, and uh, uh, Steven Spielberg was the director. Uh, George Lucas actually wrote the story for Indiana Jones long before the first film even came. working with uh, a director and screen writer named Philip Kaufman. Uh, and Philip Kaufman was responsible, f heavily responsible for the story of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Uh, and he actually decided that the Ark of the Covenant as the plot device for Raiders. So that was all him. Now, 
Unfortunately, Philip Kaufman had to step away from that project uh, because he uh, he was hired to um, write the film uh, The Outlaw, Josie Wales, which uh, was a Clint Eastwood film. stepped away to work on that. And so the project kind of got put aside. So after the release of the first Star Wars film, George Lucas was just swimming. and fortune and success because of the, how well the first Star Wars film did and so he and Steven Spielberg who is his, his good friend went to Maui I guess to just kind of get away for a while escape and they were chatting and Steven Spielberg told George Lucas he was interested in making a James Bond film. Spielberg and George Lucas made a deal with Paramount Pictures for five Indiana Jones films. So, uh, in the third film, Last Crusade. The uh, Holy Grail is the main plot device in that one. That's what everyone's after. And uh, that was George Lucas's idea. And Steven Spielberg actually was not a big fan of it at the time. He didn't like it. Didn't want it to be the Holy. sort of came up with a father-son type story to give the grail more significant meaning so that he could be alright with it. Um, so he tied it in with the, with the story of Indy and his father and said that the grail could act as sort of a, a metaphor for uh, the search for uh, like reconciliation between father and son. So, <laughs> he made it work. Enough that he could tolerate it, I guess. <laughs> so, after the first three films, wanted to do a fourth film, but 
he just could never think of a good plot device for for the movie. So he just kind of put it aside, put a pin in it. focused on the TV series instead after that. Now, in the TV series, lots of different people play uh, Indiana Jones, the young version and the old. Um, Harrison Ford wasn't really one of them except for one episode. I believe he plays old when they were filming that episode that something was going on in the episode, I believe. I couldn't tell you what. Um, but something was going on that made George Lucas think, oh, I know what we could use for the fourth movie. Aliens. <laughs> and he suddenly thought, cool, I can make a fourth movie. But Harrison Ford, who plays Indiana Jones, He had pretty much a finished script. Uh, and a few months after that, Steven Spielberg said, uh, No, I'm not going to do another alien invasion movie. I'm just not going to. Which, as it would turn out later, would be not true. As he directed War of the Worlds in 2005. wasn't interested, so George Lucas decided to focus on the Star Wars prequels instead. So, side note, all of you people who are um, big fans of the first Star Wars trilogy and absolutely hate the newer trilogy, you might the year 2000. And apparently, Steven Spielberg's son, uh, one of them, I'm not sure which one, he has like five sons or something. He has a lot of kids. Uh, one of his sons asked him when the next Indiana Jones film would be released. all it took, because Steven Spielberg, after that, kind of regained interest in, uh, in doing a fifth film. Uh, that same year, the uh, American Film Institute had a tribute to Harrison Ford, and Steven Spielberg was there. George Lucas and 
Frank Marshall, who was the producer of Indiana Jones. And they all just got to talking and decided that it was time. They were ready to make another This is a wooden motorboat that was used in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the third film. Uh, I'm waiting for it to focus, sorry. These are so detailed. hired M. Night Shyamalan to write the fourth film. And he started to, but he quit because he found the experience to be uh, too overwhelming. Uh, he just couldn't act. He said that it was too difficult to get Harrison Ford, George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg to focus, is what he said. And I guess, uh, what do you mean, what he meant by that must have been that they probably were just kind of just throwing ideas around all the time and not sticking to one <laughs> idea and that must have been very frustrating for someone who was trying to uh, write, write the script well, as far as a fifth film as far as a fifth film there have been a lot of rumors but from the looks of things it's not gonna happen anytime soon. It's been kind of mentioned here and there that George Lucas had ideas and this and that. There were rumors that Shia LaBeouf would be the new Indiana Jones, but um, I don't think that Harrison Ford This one is, it's the flying wing from Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay, so now I'm going to tell you a couple of just fun sort of trivia facts that I think you might find interesting. So. This is interesting. Um, now Harrison Ford was who Steven Spielberg wanted from the beginning, from the beginning to to play Indy. Of hesitant to do that because he had already he'd already cast Harrison Ford in a lot of things. He was in Star Wars One, um, Empire Strikes Back, and also um, American Graffiti. So George Lucas didn't want to just be known for constantly for constantly casting Harrison Ford. So they decided against. And Ford sort of temporarily and actually went with uh, Tom Selleck who wasn't super well known at the time but he was doing uh, 
the show Magnum P.I. So they cast him and then went into pre-production. Uh, but there was a problem. CBS would not let Tom Selleck out of his contract for Magnum P.I. Concerned that the shooting schedules for Magnum P.I. and Indiana Jones would conflict, so they said no. So Tom Selleck had to uh, turn down that role. Um, now, that's when they brought uh, Harrison Ford back. shooting with Magnum P.I. and Indiana Jones actually would not have conflicted at all because uh, Magnum P.I. the shooting for Magnum P.I. got delayed and didn't actually even start shooting until after Indiana Jones or uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark had finished shooting. So, that's funny. Okay, now this car is the German staff car from Raiders of the Lost Ark. This one is the mine car from Temple of Doom. In fact, Harrison Ford was actually elected to the board of directors of the Archaeological Institute of America <laughs> because of his role as Indiana Jones. They said that um, his character had a significant role in stimulating the public's interest in uh, archaeological This one, I'm going to pronounce wrong, possibly. Uh, it's called the uh, the Duesenberg. Maybe that's how you say it. I hope I'm right. I might not be though. Uh, this was in Temple of Doom. So, Laura Croft. Who many of you will recognize from uh, Tomb Raider? Is uh, the archaeologist in Tomb Raider in the Tomb Raider series? She was originally designed as a man. That character was originally going to be a dude, <laughs> um, but they changed it to a woman partly because the developer. 
too similar to Indiana Jones. Um, another game, video game series that was highly influenced by Indiana Jones was the Uncharted series. And the main character of the Uncharted series is Nathan Drake, who is very, very, very heavily uh, inspired by Indiana Jones. He even kind of looks like him. I like the little propellers. Oh, uh, this plane is This one, oh yeah, it's the Ford Tri-Motor Plane from Temple of Doom. So there's a character by the name of Sala. Jones himself. <laughs> and he's got his little whip and his hat and everything. And he just won't focus. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> so there are some Shanghai. Uh, and the nightclub is called Club Obi-Wan. Uh, after Obi-Wan Kenobi. Also, uh, in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Pontoon biplane. Forgot to mention, but um, the 
this is the biplane that's in the opening uh, of Raiders of the Lost Ark and it has the identification letters oh, I'm gonna try and get really close, you probably won't be able to see it with my camera but it's right here it's right here along the plane and it says OB CPO, which is a little nod to Obi, Obi Wan Kenobi, and uh, C3PO from Star Wars, which is really cute. Can you see that? I think you can maybe just see it right there. Yeah, <laughs> and there are more. short cameo in oh what was it Raiders? It might have been Temple of Doom, I can't remember. But he appeared in one of those. Uh, and he is the man who walks Indiana Jones to his plane after the opening chase. who is actually now Steven Spielberg's wife. Uh, they got married, I think about 10 years after the first film came out. But I, she was in the second film, I believe, Temple of Doom. <clears throat> she played Willie Scott. Uh, she, for this one particular scene, she had a dress that was covered in these really rare um, vintage beads and yeah, it was in the Shanghai nightclub scene and so she's wearing this beautiful dress and an elephant <laughs> that was on set damaged the dress by trying to eat it <laughs> and they had to repair the dress as best they could like, without replacing the beads because they were pretty much irreplaceable and they had to alter it so much that it barely even fit Kate Copshaw anymore and it was almost too tight for her to move in the scene <laughs> So the costume designer had to fill out some insurance forms. I guess the dress was insured and he had to write on the forms that the cause of damage was elephant tried to eat the dress. <laughs> I think that's funny. This is fairly well known, but uh, George Lucas's inspiration for the name Indiana came from his dog, who was named Indiana. Uh, what's interesting too is that that dog was also the inspiration. short round was named after I can't remember it was someone's dog <laughs> also okay so there's a scene in 
Raiders, I believe. sort of long, involved sword fight with this guy, but he was feeling awful. He didn't feel up to doing it. So he just said, he said, why don't I just shoot him? And he did. And that's an iconic scene from that movie. And it actually wasn't even written into the script or planned. It was just another one. And forward, sort of genius, <laughs> kind of ad libbing uh, experiences. Except this time he was doing it because he felt too sick <laughs> just to have the whole scene. of America decision to uh, bring in a new rating, uh, the PG-13 rating. If you're paying very close attention, you'll also remember that the other movie responsible was Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. the reason that they needed a sort of a new rating for this film was that there's a scene with like a head explosion which uh, gave it an R rating but then they changed it to uh, sort of a head explosion but hidden by flame changed it to a PG rating, but I think a lot of us can agree that that's still pretty graphic and probably a little bit too graphic for just a PG rating, so. Yeah, and it's PG-13. everything that I know about Indiana Jones. I hope that you have enjoyed this week's Time Travel Tuesday and found it interesting and informative and that you learned lots of interesting facts about your vote in the comment section below.
for your favorite piece of nostalgia from any genre, any decade. Just vote for your favorite piece of nostalgia. And I'll be seeing you guys again very soon. But until then, first thing I got. I want you guys, you smarties out there, to tell me what in the Sam hell this is, because I'm gonna use it as a tiny ice cube tray. <laughs>